Before we can start programming, we'll need to cover a bit more theory, but I promise you, at the end of the video, we'll have a working program. Until then, you might want to prepare some stuff in the background. You probably already have the Java runtime environment, which allows you to run Java programs. But to create those programs, you will need the Java Development Kit, or in short, JDK. I won't explain how to install it, because the guys at Oracle already made an excellent guide for that. If you follow this link, you will find detailed instructions on how to install the JDK on different systems. Once you successfully install that, you will be able to compile existing Java code into an actual program. So next question is, how do we create the Java code? Well, as long as you have any kind of text editor, maybe Notepad, maybe Gedit, maybe something else, you have everything you need. Java source code is not much more than a simple text. The compiler, which is part of the JDK, is what turns that text into something we can run. Of course, no developer uses a simple text editor, except maybe for the challenge. During your first weeks, I recommend you to use an editor with built-in syntax highlighting. This feature will, for example, give keywords a different color than normal text. It doesn't interfere with your code, it only makes it more readable. Personally, I used the program site. It also has a built-in console and hotkeys for compiling running the code. You'll need to program everything on your own, but you won't have to worry about the rest. The best option for larger projects is of course a powerful IDE. One of the most known is Eclipse. It will not only help you to organize your code, but actually can write some parts of it on its own. But do yourself a favor and don't use something powerful like that. You will learn so much better if you have to write every single piece of code on your own. Honestly, the best exercise you can get is with a pen and some paper. Writing a program by hand helped me a lot when I started programming. In the end it depends on how you learn the best and you should use what you feel comfortable with. Now for the programming. Let's recap the metaphor I used in the last video. The man sitting in a room and performing tasks is a method, while a complete floor with several such rooms represents an object, and the blueprints for this are called class. Now we as programmers are the architects, we create those blueprints. And that said we start with our first one. To create this, I will use the program site on a Windows system, but it should work very similar with other programs and systems too. The first thing we need to do is to make it clear for the compiler that what we are going to write is meant to be a class and nothing else. We do that with a keyword, class. Keywords like this are used so the compiler knows that something has a special meaning or function he needs to take care of. In this case, it tells the compiler that he needs to interpret the following as a class. Now we also have to add a name. Each class has a unique name with which we can identify and distinguish them. I'll call this one first class. All that we need now are those two curly brackets. Everything that we write between those will be seen as part of the class by the compiler. This is now a fully functional class. It doesn't do anything yet, but it's valid. Let's make sure the compiler agrees with us. First, we save this to the disk. Here we have two important things. The name of the file has to be the exactly same name that you have chosen for your class. So here it is, first class. And the file type, the description of what this file is supposed to be, has to be Java. So we need to save our file as firstclass.java. Let's compile it. In this editor I have a built-in console, so I can just use a hotkey. If you want to do this with another program, you can use your system's own console. The command is java c for java compile and the arguments are the files it needs to compile. Here only firstclass.java. On the right you now can see that the compiler is finished without an error. A completely empty floor is pretty boring, so let's add a room with a man inside to do some stuff. In other words, we're going to add a method to this class. But not just any method, we'll create the main method. No matter how big our program gets, no matter how many classes we create, there will only be one main method. For a reason. Think of the program again as a building. The people working inside are very organized. Nobody does anything without being told to do so. But that means that when we start the program, we have to tell somebody in there to start working ourselves. Then this person can tell others to start. This person represents the main method, which in the code looks like this. Public, static, void, main. Then brackets, and inside those we put string, square brackets, and arcs for arguments. 
the main method always has to look exactly like this. Exception being arcs, which is just a name you can choose. Arcs is just a common one. All that is written in here has a meaning, but we're not ready to talk about those yet, so for now don't think too much about this. Similar to the class, we add those curly brackets again to mark the error which belongs to this method. Let's compile to see if we have any errors. Now we not only have a valid class, we actually have a valid program that we can run. It just still doesn't do anything. Also by now, you may have noticed that in the same folder where you saved your Java code, there's another file with a .class at the end. This file was created by the compiler and now can be used by the Java runtime environment to run our program. To do that, we use the command java and give it as argument the name of the class in which we've put the main method. So here the command is java first class. Depending on where you used that command, you might get a message that tells you that your program finished without errors, but nothing else. That is because so far we have only created the structure of our program. We have a class called first class and the main method within. To make our program do something, I'll add this line between the curl brackets that belong to the main method. System.out.println, which I will spell print line from now on. Behind we put brackets and a semicolon, and in those brackets we put, marked with quotation marks, the text hello world, or any other text you like. Now just compiling and running the code, and you'll see hello world, or your text, outputted to the console. I'll explain how this line works in the next video. For now this whole code is mostly to see if you've set up your system correctly. If you get to the point that you see the text printed on your console, you're ready for the next video. Otherwise, look at the installation instructions for the JDK again, maybe there's something you simply overlooked. The code of this episode can be downloaded via the link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.